Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I want to talk about a tool that's found in Lightroom Classic that a lot of photographers aren't familiar with. It's called the Targeted Adjustment Tool. The targeted adjustment tool is available in two different areas of Lightroom Classic. If you open up the tone curve, you can see right here this little circle, that is the targeted adjustment tool. And you could use it in all of the curves. That is the parametric curve, the point curve, and all three RGB curves as well. The targeted adjustment tool is also available in the HSL panel. You can see it's right here and you could use it to affect hue, saturation, and luminance. Now let's start with saturation. To use the targeted adjustment tool, the reason why you might want to use the targeted adjustment tool is you want to affect just one color in the image and not all the colors. And maybe the color isn't just saturated blue or saturated purple. It might be a mix of colors and you want to increase the saturation of it. That is where the targeted adjustment tool works very well. To use it, let's say for saturation, click on the saturation tab, click on the targeted adjustment tool, your cursor turns into the tool. To use it, simply put the cursor over the color. In this case, we want to affect the saturation of. Let's say the blue sky. I want to make it more saturated. If I click with the left mouse button, um, the tool will disappear. Um, I don't know why it does that, but it's kind of annoying, particularly when I'm trying to teach people how to use it. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button. You can see it disappeared. So you don't know exactly what I'm doing now, but if I draw down or pull the mouse downward, you could see I'm sucking the color out of the blue sky. So we have a black and white sky now. But if you look over at the HSL panel, not only did it move blue to minus 100, but it also moved purple to minus five. So it didn't just target a slider's worth of color, it targeted actually the mix of colors that are, or that make up the saturation of the sky. So let me just reset that by double clicking on the word saturation. So I mentioned I want to just increase the saturation of the blue sky while pulling down on the mouse, pulls the color out, pushing up on the mouse adds more color. So you can see I'm adding saturation now. And I just wanna add a little, not go crazy. And uh, if I wanted, let's say, add more saturation to the green grass, just go over the green grass quick click with the left mouse button and then push up and you can see we're adding saturation to greens. Now it isn't targeted in that it just affects the area around where you clicked. It'll affect the color everywhere in the image. So if I had green up here in the top right hand corner of the blue sky and I'm increasing saturation of green by clicking down here in the lower left hand corner, it's still going to affect green everywhere. So even the green up here in the upper right, it would affect. So it affects every pixel um, that is that color, no matter where it is in the image. It's not that targeted. Also, it's here in hue. If you need to affect the hue of something, let's say of the blue sky, just click with the left mouse button, pull down, push up, whatever you could affect. You could see how it's moving blue and purple again. I'll reset it by double clicking on the word hue. So it resets that. So you can see with saturation, we added a little bit saturation to the green. It also moved the green and yellow. Uh, at the same time, and then it, we did the blue separately. In luminance, let's say, I want to make the blue sky a little darker. So I'll click on blue up here and pull down on the mouse to make it a little darker. And if I want to make, uh, let's say the brighter green a little brighter. So that would be these greens that have a little more yellow in it. So I'm gonna click with the left mouse button push up. So you can see it's moving the yellow and green slider and it moved the yellow a little more significantly than it would have if I would have maybe clicked on a darker green. So you can see how the targeted adjustment tool uh, allows you to just target specific colors in this case with the HSL tab so that you could affect the hue, saturation, and luminance of those colors. Now when you're done with the tool just click on it again to kind of put it away. Now I mentioned it's also available in the tone curve. Now in my opinion it's a little more effective in the parametric curve than it might be in the point curve or any of the other curves for that matter. Let me try to explain. If I have the point curve active and I click on the targeted adjustment tool, 
watch when I hover or I just move my cursor over the image. You can see there's a point dancing around that curve. That is right where I am now, where that point is, that's the actual tone that I'm hovering over. Uh, let's say that this little shadow that's off in this far hill, let's say I want to make that a little darker. So I'll hover over that, right? And you could see that, let's say, where that shadow is. All right, there's the point. If I click with the left mouse button and drag down on the mouse, it's going to pull the curve down. But the way the tone curve works, it's a curve. So it's pulling a significant portion of the curve down. So it's affecting a lot of pixels. So that's the point curve. So it's, it's not as precise as you might like it to be. Now I'm going to reset it. I'm just going to right click and just reset channel. Now if I go to the parametric curve, on the other hand, we have the sliders, right? And we have the targeted adjustment tool. I'm going to go over that uh, part. And you can see that, let's say I just want to affect that part of the curve. If I click with the left mouse button and drag down, you can see how it doesn't pull the whole curve down. It just kind of pulls that area. So it's a little more precise when you use the parametric curve uh, with the targeted adjustment tool. So if I want to make the yellows a little brighter, come in here, find a bright part. And you can see how it dances around on the thing. You could try to find the brightest yellow possible. There, right there. Click with the left mouse button, push up. And we're making that a little brighter. Now I'll uh, mention that I don't use targeted adjustments with the tone curve at all. I'm going to reset this uh, because it's just a little easier, in my opinion, if I'm using, let's say, the parametric curve, it's just easier to use the sliders. Hovering over the sliders, it shows you the part of the curve that's going to be affected. Highlights is like the upper third of the curve. Lights is about three quarters of the curve, the upper part of the curve. Um, darks is about three quarters of the lower part of the curve, and shadows is the lower like third or half of the curve. So you can see how that kind of is a little easier to, for my, in my opinion, to help target specific parts of the curve. Um, if I'm using the point curve, which I actually more often use, I find it a lot easier just to put points on, on here. And if I want to affect specific parts, I find it a little easier to do it here. So I could do that very quickly, right? It didn't take a lot of effort. So that's me. I'm sure many people are different. They prefer maybe to use the targeted adjustment tool with the tone curve as well. I just find it a little more cumbersome, a little more difficult to target the tone as opposed to targeting the color with the HSL panel. Let me know what you think. Do you use targeted adjustments in Lightroom Classic? Let me know in the comments below. And if you do, do you use it in the tone curve? Um, I don't know of anyone that actually uses it in the tone curve. I know People that occasionally use it in the HSL uh, panel, not all the time, but occasionally. And I guess I fall into that category. So that's it. The targeted adjustments are targeted adjustments in Lightroom Classic. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>